Hello and welcome to another episode of my bevy series about making and working with scenes. In this video I'll be showing you how to create a scene and edit it in file using Bevy's hot reloading system so that you can see your changes taking effect in game. And then in the second part, I'll be using the Bevy editor please in order to show you how you can use that to uh, much more finely control and can manipulate scenes in your game and then save them out into a file. This will also include the fact that I have put a uh, pull request into the editor and that has now made it in, allowing you to specify certain entities not to be saved. So to start off with editing in a file, what you want to do is when you add the asset plugin, whether this is through the default plugins or directly adding the asset plugin, you want to set watch for changes to true with the 0 0.9 changes. This is done by doing dot set and then asset plugins watch for changes. And then you also want to load the bundle into the world as a dynamic scene bundle using the asset loader. This will allow the asset server to watch for changes. For this example, I have component A and B, which both reflect serialize, deserialize, and component so that they can be dynamically loaded as dynamic scenes. So in the console here, you'll say that it says component A zero, component A one is because I've got two entities with component A on them. If I go into my example scene, you can see that I've got zero and one with their corresponding things. If I then change this to being two and three and save, you'll see that now three and two are in the world. And this is just done by a uh, system that is looking for changes in component A. And you can do anything in here that you would want to do. As long as your, your components are serializable, you can edit and manipulate this in any way you'd want to. And it would dynamically load into the game. Let's say again, like if I change this to a five, the changes take effect and your game can see that these changes have been made. All right, I've now added the bevy editor into my game. You can see by this top bar up here that is added by default, I can either click open window to open specific windows of the editor actually in the world, or I can press E to go into editor mode, which will actually pause the in-game clock so that if you have something that runs with the delta time, it will be frozen while in editor mode. I can then have a system that if I press spacebar will spawn an object in the world. This would need to be customized for your game to spawn in your individual objects that you want in your scene. So however you want to do that. Then it uses mesh detection so I can click on this mesh. I can then go over here and edit the transform and you know rotate it and do whatever I want to do with the cube to move it into the position that it's supposed to be for the scene. I could spawn another cube, move that around, and you know set up whatever scene you want to have made and created for your game. Then you can go and change the editor window to scenes, and you can specify where you want to export the scene to. Originally, without my pull request, this would have failed because it would try and serialize your camera, which it's going to do anyway. I will just quickly show you that. Oh, so I just restart that because I have my Bevy basic setup in like a nested file system, which means it doesn't work with the analyzer and file path properly. So I had to restart it using Cargo Run. But once I've saved my scene, if I pop over to my assets thing here, you'll see that the camera entity, which is on three, there, there are a lot more entities here than I would want. I would just want the two cubes to show up. So if we come in here, we have the two cubes, but we also have the um, dynamic scene that I loaded before, which can stay. But we have the camera and these two uh, picking sets that are part of the editor, allowing you to click on entities. So what we would want to do is say, add not in scene to these. So on these, we want to add the not in scene components to them. So we've now flagged the three entities that we don't want to have not in scene. So if we then back, go back to the scene window and click save again, and then go into our test. Now we only have the um, entities that 
we actually want in our thing. There's still more than you'd expect, but that's because two of these are the component A, component B, and it also contains like their parent hierarchy. But that's basically all you need to do in order to load up scenes like that. And this will allow you to save scenes. This component is also publicly exported, the not in scene component, which will allow you to, um, in theory, add it to things like your camera at compile time so that you don't have to manually add it to specific components in your scene. If you don't want them to be in a scene, just add that component and the editor's save function won't capture it. Uh, I hope you've enjoyed this video. Like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one where I'll be covering Bevy's command struct and the subcommands that you can use to execute. And everyone, have a good Christmas. I will probably see you after.